I'm always a little hesitant to recommend books to people. And that goes double if the book in question is really, really long. I mean, if I put mumbo jumbo by Ishmael Reed in your hands and you didn't like it, no harm done. But if I put something in your hands that's a thousand pages and you spend a couple months of your life really trying to work through and understand it, it's just a big ask. So what I'm gonna do right now is go through the four thickest spines on my shelf and ask two different questions. The first is, did I like it? And the second is, was it worth it? And I'm gonna start by talking about Against the Day by Thomas Pynchon. Now, this is about a thousand pages. It's his longest book. It's not necessarily his most difficult read though. In fact, it's an adventure story. In fact, it's a lot of adventure stories. You've got people in hot air balloons, people burrowing through the center of the earth. You've got Western stories. You've got spy stories. All these different activities happening mostly in America, but also in Europe and all across the globe. Was reading this book worth it? Now, I definitely liked it. it I, I'm a fan of this author. But if you only had, you know, four weeks of your reading life left, I don't know if this is the book that I would suggest. It's not just that it's so long, it's that there's so many other ways to get started with Thomas Pynchon. You could pick up something like Crying a Lot 49, 150, 160 pages, read this, get a similar glimpse into his world, and then make the decision. Do you want to go for one of those thicker spined books, the Against the Days, The Gravity of Rainbow, one of those real commitment reading experiences? So did I like the Against the Day? Yeah. Was it worth it? Maybe. And I think I'm going to land in kind of a similar place with the next book, which is The Instructions by Adam Levin. Now, this is by far the thickest spine that I have on my bookshelf. It's about 1,100 pages long, but it only covers a couple of days in the life of a boy. This boy is a violent kid. He's a very proud kid. And he's also a kid who has a sneaking suspicion that he may just be the Messiah. It's definitely, um, it's a challenging read in that you're spending so much time with these characters. The language isn't that hard to get through. Did I like it? Yeah, I did. I would love to actually have a conversation with this author someday about some of the things that happened at the end. Was it worth it? Like Against the Day, that is a trickier question to answer. Now, I liked this book. But if you wanted to pick up your first book by this author, there are other places to get started. And for me, personally, I found his second novel, Bubblegum, to be just a more rewarding experience. Bubblegum is about a world in which people have these synthetic pets that they keep with them. And the more they love these pets, the cuter they get, the more they almost find themselves wanting to kill them. And within that sort of context, Levin says all sorts of interesting things about human nature, about the way we relate to our families, to the things we love, and the way that we keep things to ourselves, what it really means to be an empathetic human being. I liked Bubblegum. It is also like 700, 750 pages, so it is a much shorter book than the instructions. And if you were looking and saying, where should I get started? I think this was just a little bit better. On, it was a book I connected to just a little bit more. And next, I'm just going to destroy any nerd lit cred I have by talking about The Recognitions by William Gaddis. This is a book where if you read Thomas Pynchon, people say, oh, you're going to love this book. I was so excited to pick it up. It is almost a thousand pages. Didn't really faze me. And it is about, I don't know. And that's not an I don't know like Gravity's Rainbow, where it's like, okay, I don't really know, but I love the characters. I go back, I read pages, I laugh, I love the language. This is a book that I remember almost nothing about except for a sense of frustration. Once Gaddis in, uh, introduces a character, he tends not to ever use that character's name again. He just refers to he this and she this. And it's not like, say, like Cormac McCarthy, where you get used to it after a period of time. It feels like it's just being willfully difficult. I think he was trying to make a statement about forgery or how we pretend to be other people. I'm not sure. Did I like this book? Not really. Was it worth it? Not really, except for now I can sit around and say, yeah, I read the recognitions. And the other nice thing about this book is that I didn't really feel that way about J.R., his second novel. This is the other Gaddis book that I've read, and I really liked this book. 
It is challenging in all the same ways that the recognitions was, but the characters were brighter. I could distinguish between them without even hearing their names. And when I did get confused, I really enjoyed the experience of going back and trying to figure out who was talking to who and why. And the statement about capitalism and the ways in which this boy JR manages to start a business out of a phone booth and get all these other adults sort of running around in crazy ways around him was something that I really connected with. So recognitions, did I like it? No. Was it worth it? Not for me. But I would dig into other books by Gaddis based on his second novel. And last, I'm going to talk about Infinite Jest. I'm a Gen X dude. You knew this was coming. Infinite Jest is David, Fa David Foster Wallace's masterwork. It is 1,200 pages, 900 pages of text, and two or 300 pages of endnotes. These are tiny type, and yes, you have to read them. And you have to read them in the order that you're reading the novel. It's part of the experience, and there's key plot points and character developments that happen in the endnotes. This is a book about the nature of distraction and addiction. It's a book that dares to ask the question, why do we, what, what are we scared of? What are we trying to hide from that we throw ourselves into these different causes? And in the book, you see people throw themselves into drinking and then getting off of drinking, drugs, getting off of drugs, political causes, sports. And of course, the ultimate thing that people throw themselves into in the novel is a movie called Alternately the Entertainment or Infinite Jest. And it is a movie that is so entertaining that once you start watching it, you literally can't stop. You will watch it over and over again until you die. Nothing else seems important. And if that was relevant 20 years ago, my God, think how much more relevant it is today. And of course, the irony of Infinite Jest is that the book itself becomes one of those things that is continually absorbing you and distracting you. It defies you to try to pick up any sort of narrative flow as you follow the two main characters this kid at a tennis academy and a addiction counselor at the uh, addiction crisis center across the street as they encounter all these different people. And of course, the game of Infinite Jest is when it ends, it doesn't really end because the beginning, the prologue, puts these people in a situation that doesn't seem possible based on the way the book ended. And you really have to do the work yourself to figure out, knowing what I know, could I write a story that puts these characters and brings them back to what I know to be true in the future? So did I like this book? Obviously. Was it worth it? I mean, obviously for me. And the other tragic reason why I think it's so worth it is that if you want to read a novel by David Foster Wallace, not a short story, not one of his essays, but an actual novel, it is kind of the only game in town. I thought Broom of the System was a really fun novel, but it's a much lighter sort of novel. And it's a novel that I believe Wallace himself wasn't a fan of. He kind of said, yeah, that was my student project. And then, um, Pale King, good writing, it was not a novel. And I don't think the editors even claim it was. It was the notes and scenes and the ideas that Wallace was putting together for some other future novel. So Infinite Jest, I liked it. Yes, I thought it was worth it. And hopefully, if you got through this video and you want to get into one of those really like thick, long books that just kind of absorbs you, this gives you a good idea of where to start.